I'm Ryan Graham. I, uh, I lead the sales team here at PropFuel. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spend about 25 to 30 minutes just walking through, first of all, an overview of what it is that PropFuel does, how associations use PropFuel, why they use PropFuel, the value that they see. And then I have a bunch of different kind of examples, relevant examples teed up uh, that I'll walk through from a demonstration standpoint. Um, as I'm going, don't hesitate to write questions in. You can write them into either the Q&A or the chat, the chat area of, um, of Zoom. And what I'll do is I will, um, I will pick those up as, uh, as they come in. Um, and we'll just go from there. Uh, so first of all, just for a little bit of background. So, um, so our team has been in the uh, association space for uh, close to about um, uh, close to about 15 or 16 years. So prior to PropFuel, we had an LMS business and we worked with associations to deliver online learning. Uh, so we, we have a really strong understanding of the association space. Um, with that said, we at PropFuel today, we have about 120 clients, all associations, all sorts of different you know, types of associations from a vertical standpoint, all sorts of different sizes and makeups, um, you know, state associations, national associations, uh, trade with organizational members, professional, all sorts of different staff sizes, membership sizes, et cetera. The common thread that we see with our clients and, and just more broadly across associations is that associations are kind of stuck in this cycle of broadcasting informational um, uh, communication uh, email at their members. So kind of a one, when I say a broadcast, like a one-way push of information. And the basis for doing that is, is they're either sending everything to everyone, meaning they're sending all of their communications to all of their members, and, 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 and or they're doing a degree of segmentation. The segmentation might be at the member, non-member level. It might be even more deeper and more deeply embedded into the membership. You know, um, okay, let's take members based upon demographical data, how long they've been in the industry, behavioral data. Let's take the people who register for our annual conference, um, you know, uh, uh, over the last three years versus those that have not. But at the end of the day, all of that is just a lot of assumption to then determine what informational kind of um, broadcast emails you want to you want to you want to push at people, and the inherent challenge there is that assumption, and then the basis of not really being able to have a direct one to one you know exchange with people just leads to a lot of kind of waste and and ultimately um, uh, lower engagement from a from a from an email and communication standpoint. So. Um, what our, our focus is, is we think about the fundamental aspects of a conversation. Uh, and I'll use this as an example here where this is, this is a new member. This is one email in a drip sequence that Profuel is sending. That's part of a new member onboarding um, um, campaign. So um, our fundamental purpose behind our emails is, is different than uh, Informs, Real Magnet, HubSpot, Pardot, MailChimp, all those different systems. Our clients use all of those systems. They use PropFuel in a complementary way alongside of those. The purpose of our emails is we want to ask a question, capture an insight, which is a specific selection, uh, a specific response to a question, and then drive a series of immediate actions. And with those actions, we think about how can we deliver relevant next steps, content, information to someone based upon how they uh, just responded. And we wanna do that in an immediate fashion. And how can we enrich the data that we have in the AMS, in the client's mar existing marketing automation system, et cetera, to make the next touch point or the next set of communications with that individual more relevant on the basis of what we just learned. And, and so, you know, in this example here, what we're doing is we're, we're saying, hey, what's the main reason you joined the association, Air Force Association? Now, if you just think about this, the typical new member onboarding communication is, is, is very different than this. It's typically a, an email or a series of emails saying, hey, welcome. Here's the 12 member benefits that you'll find great value in, you know, with links to all of them. And the challenge there is that's overwhelming to the member. Um, people don't read <laughs> and uh, you don't really glean back any real tangible insight about what's driving people, their motivations, their intent, their interests, et cetera. 
And at the end of the day, when we think about the nature of a conversation, that is just, that's a complete stray from the way that actual human conversation works in the sense that if I was face to face with a new member, what I would do is, um, is I would, um, I would not necessarily, um, I would not, um, um, uh, just kind of ramble onto a diatribe about what it is that, um, it, it is that we were, we were, uh, uh, I wanted to tell them what I would do is I would ask them a question. I'd say, Hey, why'd you join? Okay, great. Let me tell you about this thing that's relevant to you. And then we'd have a back and forth conversation. So in this context with it, with the Air Force Association, what we're doing is we're saying, why'd you join? As the member responds, we're immediately taking them to a, uh, we're immediately delivering three actions. So first of all, we are uh, delivering relevant content on the landing page. So what we're doing here is, um, So what we're doing here is we are, um, um, as the member replies, what essentially we're doing is we are delivering three immediate actions. So as the member replies and says, hey, I wanna join, uh, or this is the reason that I joined uh, to support the Air Force and Space Force family. What we're doing is we're saying, okay, here is a relevant next step for how you can go about doing that. Now that's the immediate relevant content in you know, uh, information that we wanna to provide to the member. And basically what we're doing is we're delivering relevant content on that landing page that is related back to each one of these six different answers. Now, this is the admin side of the platform. What we're also doing that's extremely unique is as the member replies, we are tagging them and we're updating the member database in a specific field to complete that record with their response. And the way that we do this, and, and the reason we can do this is we're not just dealing in generic behavioral data where it's, hey, you know, new member, here's, you know, links to 12 different member benefits. And, you know, we think you might want some of these. And then we have to stitch together, like, which of the li those links did they click on? And, you know, did they open the email? Did they not? We have very specific selection data because, again, the premise of PropFuel is we're sending emails and, and automated email campaigns where the purpose is to ask a question, capture that insight and deliver actions. So in this case, what we're doing is we're updating their font, uh, field inside of Fontiva with the reason that the member joined. And this gives then the Air Force Association the ability to, to, to pull a list of those individual members. Um, and, and what they do is three months into the member experience, they go back to them and they say, hey, when you joined, you told us this is why you joined. Have you been able to accomplish this or have you been able to leverage this benefit with us yet? If no, let's pause, reset and show you how to do that. If yes, like, where do you want to go next on the journey? What do you think we can help you with? And then they will point them in that direction. Uh, so it's just an awesome member experience. Now to take it up kind of a, a few levels, um, basically what our clients are doing is they're using PropFuel across the big, you know, thematic uh, phases of membership. So we actively have clients using PropFuel, and I'll show you some of these examples. We act actively have clients using PropFuel in the prospective member acquisition and nurturing phase, the new member onboarding phase. This is an example of that where it's a, 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 a kind of an abbreviated new member onboarding campaign, the uh, renewal and the lapsed member win back process. And I'll touch on the lapsed member process because I know uh, Bree on our team highlighted um, the American Academy of Pediatrics specific success with a lapsed member campaign. Um, so there's the membership uh, phases. Then there's um, using PropFuel in um, more general kind of communication and marketing related to events and uh, driving registrations, driving engagement around events. Uh, there is educational programs, um, advocacy, um, um, core kind of member benefits. Um, all of this, what, what the purpose behind all of this is, again, the idea of broadcasting and telling members about stuff is, is flawed in the sense that you, you really don't know what, unless you ask the question of members, you really don't know what they want and basing the thought of what they want on the assumption of what you know about them demographically and saying, hey, everyone who falls into this category of demographic, they automatically want this thing. That's obviously not true. Or everyone who took this behavior went to this page on the website or, or joined in the, or uh, logged into the community well, they all want that. They all want this thing. So we're going to tell them about it. Again, that's not true. 
So we really want to, instead of pushing information to people, we want to ask, we want to listen, and then we want to be responsive. And then we want to make the, the communication with those, with those people more relevant on an ongoing basis. And what that does is that drives higher engagement in the different benefits that are being provided. And it leads to more value being driven from membership and uh, naturally increases increases retention. Again, if you have any questions about anything as I'm going through it, don't hesitate to um, uh, to write your question into either the chat or the Q and A, uh, and and I'll pick up on those. Um, and then the last, um, uh, or not the last, but one of the other core use cases, and I'll and I'll show this one first is profile building. And what's really cool about this one is every association struggles with the same thing. It's that um, it, it is that you, you, an association is just typically missing key pieces of data about members. It may be that the members are organizations, it may be that they're individuals, but you either have holes in the data, have stale kind of old data, members joined 15 years ago, and it's no way that, you know, it's just not possible that they have the same title or whatever it might be, um, uh, or missing secondary contact information. And typically, the way to get that is you ask members to log into their profile through your website and they uh, you ask them to complete specific fields in their member record. And you email and you ask them to do it, they don't do it, and then you ask them again and they don't do it and so on and so forth. And it becomes this cat and mouse kind of game. And you ultimately never, never get the data that you're looking for. One of the awesome things about PropFuel is because we have this very unique ability in our integrations with the AMS systems and, and other systems, we have a two-way integration with all these different systems. So basically what it looks like is um, we have all these different uh, integrations with all these different AMSs, marketing automation systems, et cetera. So what's unique about this is these are two-way integrations. So for example, these guys, Air Force Association went to members and we said, hey, it um, uh, looks like your you know, a mailing address is bad. What mailing address would you like to associate with your membership? As soon as they um, uh, update that, what we're going to do is we're going to use an action and we're going to write this back to the either the, the contact field in Fontiva or the account field, or we can create a task in Fontiva with this. So we can do this with all the different AMSs. Here's an awesome example. These guys have about a uh, large number of, let's say, uh, organizational members. Well, they know naturally, there's enough of them that they know that they probably aren't talking to the, the right primary contact. So they went out, Epcor went out to the primary contacts that they currently have, and uh, and they said, hey, um, you know, uh, we currently have you listed as the primary. Are you still the right person? So uh, they got um, twenty seven percent, if I remember correctly, twenty seven percent of these members of just off of one email to reply, and then of that, of that twenty seven percent. Uh, I think uh, it was maybe 12% or so of, the, of, of that um, uh, said, no, I'm not the right person. Well, if you say no here, what they're going to do is they're going to bring you to a page, a uh, prop fuel automatic, they're automatically going to bring you to prop fuel page. And here, I'll show you. And what it's going to do is it's going to ask for the right person. So who is the right person? Can you give us this information about them? Then they automatically update that data inside of their member record for the organization inside of their AMS. Um, uh, another example of this is um, Missouri State Teachers. Amazing example. They know probably that 10% of their membership <clears throat> are students. So they know that when they're communicating with them, especially when they're seniors, they're communicating through their college email. And as that student graduates and they join the workforce and become a teacher, which is a hugely critical time for them to be engaged with the association, uh, for the association to then demonstrate value to them as they're starting their career, they basically disappear for the association because they leave that college email behind as they graduate. And now they're working with their, their personal email, their work email, whatever it might be. MSTA has to wait for them to come back. So what MSTA has been doing is they reach out to these seniors strategically and they say, hey, we, um, uh, are, well, first of all, are you still planning on teaching in Missouri? If they click yes, we're gonna ask them for their email address. So when they click yes here, we're gonna say, hey, would you provide us with your email address? All the member has to do is add their email address here, type it in, click submit. With all of this, the member never has to log in and our client doesn't have to export and import data in a manual fashion. They got about uh, a little bit over 50, 50, somewhere between 50 to 55% of their seniors this year to provide them with a personal email address so they could stay in touch with them. And they've never had that. Uh, so there's stuff like that that is um, from a profile building standpoint, unbelievably unique that our clients are doing.
Um, so that that is a uh, just a phenomenal use case. And again, we have integrations with all of the, the primary AMS platforms. There's a couple that we're building and adding right now. Um, like we're currently, um, I, I can't even remember what some of them are, but uh, oh, we're building an integration for uh, Growth Zone, if anyone's familiar with that. Uh, we're finishing up an integration with, um, um, no, we just released that. Actually, I was thinking of Novi AMS. We just released that. So we have integrations with pretty much all the AMSs. If there's one that we don't have and a client comes on and, and based upon client demand, we will build it. Uh, that's not an issue. Our framework for integrations is very simple. Uh, and what we do with integrations ultimately, and I'll show you this, is we make all of them uh, standard plugins. And, and with that, and this is just fundamentally a different approach to, to integrations. Uh, I'll delete this one so I can show you this. So let's say I was coming in as a new client and we're meeting, we meet with all of our new clients. We have an onboarding process where we do at minimum a kickoff meeting and six live working sessions with clients. Now, integrations are so easy that a client can come in and do this, but sometimes clients aren't comfortable. So we'll do this with them. So basically what we do is let's say Salesforce is my AMS or any one of these, I would just come in, I would click add. In case of Salesforce, I'm just going to click a button here. It's the same with a lot of these. Um, so Nimble, just click a button. Some of these, you have to add your credentials. So Netform Enterprise, I add my XWeb credentials. Nonetheless, the point with this is basically you click a button, either add information or click another button. And now in the case of Salesforce, this is automatically now connected to PropFuel. We use Salesforce at the enterprise level, Salesforce Enterprise. It's connected to our Salesforce. Everything else about the integration is point and click configuration. So basically, I, all these fields on the left here are prop fuel fields. Now I can click in here and I can take all my different data fields in, in Salesforce or Netform Enterprise or YM or whatever my AMS is, IMS, and I can map them to these prop fuel fields. So we got first name, last name, uh, uh, last name, uh, email. Uh, let's go for some other kind of uh, unique data. So join date. Uh, we'll go for a mem uh, member type, uh, expiration date, and I'm adding some of these specifically because I want to show you some things with these, uh, member status, uh, reason joined, uh, net promoter score, uh, preferred learning mode, and we'll say that's it for now. So now once that's done, the awesome thing about this is I can come into my campaigns and I can fully automate how people get into the prop fuel campaigns. So I could come in and I could say, hey, I want to add the people from our AMS who have a um, membership expiration date that is expiring uh, within the next uh, 30 days. And I want to take those people and I want to make sure to add them to this campaign. But I also want to have a rule, say this was a, was a renewable campaign, I also want to have a rule in place that says if people... Um, um, their expiration date uh, goes out to within the next 300 days, let's say, then I want to remove those people because that means they will have renewed. Uh, so I want to remove those people from this campaign. What we're going to do with all of our AMS is we call their APIs every four hours. We look for updates in the AMS, in the AMS records, whether it's you know, a report in Salesforce, these data fields, an IQA query, an Aptify view, uh, whatever it might be, we look for those updates and then we pull people in. So um, that's a little bit about the integration. I want to talk about the lapsed member and the renewal side of things a little bit. So, um, and I'll kind of cover those together. So the inherent challenge with most renewal and lapsed member communications that members do is it's, ex it's way too linear in that the typical format of a communication is, hey, your membership's coming up for renewal. Might start that 90 days before. Click here to renew your membership. Takes them into the renewal process, you know, so on and so forth. Let's say the member doesn't renew. Next email, 30 days later. Hey, your membership is coming up for renewal. Click here to renew. Maybe a call in between. Next one. Hey, your membership is getting ready to lapse on you know, this date. Click here to renew. And then your membership has lapsed during the grace period. Click here to renew. It's the same call to action. And all it produces is a lagging indicator, meaning you're always looking backwards. At the point when you send the communication, you're always looking backwards to say, have they renewed yet or not? And that's all you know. You have no other intel unless you happen to get someone on the phone in, during one of those calls. What we want to do is we want to add more insightful data and provide a, a more uh, uh, to remove the friction for the member. So here's an example of a lapsed member communication. Now, 
What we're not doing here is we're not saying click here to renew. We're saying, hey, we notice you're no longer a member. You've lapsed. Are you planning to renew your membership? Now, if I click yes, it's really simple. It's going to take me to the landing page. It's basically going to function like the, the existing communication. But because it's not just a link, we know their intent. So what we'll also do is tag them, add them to a separate campaign to nurture them in case, basically to reconcile them, nurture them in case they don't actually renew. If they do, they'll be removed from that campaign. Now, if they say no, that's where there's a huge opportunity. Now we know their intent. Their intent is no. So if we do pick up the phone and call them, we can know naturally they're not planning on renewing. But what we can also do is understand why. So here's some options. Let's say I say it's too expensive. What we'll do with this then is we will immediately take them to a landing page to be responsive to that hesitation or that concern. So in this case, we're going to say, hey, AAP, did you know that we just launched an installment plan option? And we're breaking your payments down into small, smaller monthly payments. And here's the member benefits you still get, et cetera. We're also sending them an email about that. So I just got an email uh, from AAP. Uh, so here's the email that gives me similar information. And then we're adding them into a separate campaign again to nurture them in the case that they don't actually renew. AAP, awesome example. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I do know that they, I think it was about um, eight, uh, it was about 850 or so approximately lapsed members. Then this was the first campaign that they started off with with Profuel. Uh, 850 or so lapsed members. They went out to them. Uh, in the first email they got, um, uh, in the mid twenties, I want to say about, uh, uh, 25 to 27% click through rate to that eat to this email. And within, um, I believe it was within, um, I forget the defined period of time. I want to say it was about two weeks. They renewed, um, enough members to generate $36,000 in revenue from lapsed members um, I want to say it was in the range of about um, 130 or so, 130 of those original 850 renewed. And I think it was a shorter period of time. I want to say it was, it was within like a week or so renewed their membership. Um, and th 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 this is an amazing example because these guys, again, as I kind of mentioned up front, all of our clients use an existing marketing automation system. They use Informs, they use Real Magnet, they use Pardot, HubSpot, MailChimp, Marketo, et cetera. These guys use Real Magnet and they were doing that practice of, hey, just time to renew, time to renew. And this kind of broke that chain and, and the results for them were staggering. I mean, they, unlike anything that they had seen previously. Um, so there's a huge opportunity to really level up the renewal and the lapsed member communication process. Um, um, and, and just to give you another quick example, like here is... Um, AMFT, they started about uh, 90 days prior. And again, the purpose of this is to get the intent, to get a leading indicator, not a lagging indicator. So if people don't renew uh, what they do next, uh, 30 days later, they get this next communication. What member benefit do you find to be most valuable? This one's awesome because what it does is it allows us to be responsive in the on the landing page and the follow-up email to say, hey, if it's ethics and legal consultation, did you know we're doubling down our efforts in that area? And here are the things that we've added as member benefits. Well, the member probably didn't even know about that. So now it makes the, uh, the, their renewal and, and them renewing with AMFT much more relevant because now they know AMFT is listening to them and AMFT is aligned with their interests and the stuff that they value. Um, so huge opportunity a, a, along those lines. Uh, again, if you have any questions, um, uh, don't, um, uh, don't hesitate to, um, uh, to write them into the chat or Q&A. Um, I'm going to cover probably one or two other um, core kind of use cases, and then we'll kind of close things up. Uh, so the next one I want to talk about is, is event communications. So oftentimes event communications, you're trying to drive registration for an event. It is um, the calls to action are very event centric, naturally. I mean, that's, that's you know, the way that you would think about it. It's, hey, annual conference is coming up. Call to action, click here to learn about the conference, see the sessions, click here to register for the conference. The challenge with that is, is, is it's, it's, it's event focused. It has nothing that you're not learning anything about the individual in that context. So what our clients are doing is they're augmenting their event registration communications. Like they're, they're, when they're trying to acquire or drive registrations, they're augmenting it with PropFuel. We'll use the event as the backdrop for the communication 
but really ask more of a needs or intent focused question. So this is, hey, annual conference is coming up. Now, as, a, as a, a, a side point, this annual conference, like a lot of annual conferences, had a lot of sessions. I don't remember the exact amount, but a lot. So what we're doing here is we're saying, what topic are you currently most interested in? And we have four or five other suggestions for how to ask this question in, in an event, you know, um, on an event-based, you know, kind of way. But in this example, if I say diversity, equity, and inclusion, what we're going to do is we're going to, on the landing page, tell them about the fact that there are four sessions that are specifically aligned with this topic that they're interested in. Here's those four sessions. So now what we've done is we've whittled down, you know, 50, 60 plus sessions to, to show them the four that are relevant and create that, that alignment um, with their interest and why they would want to go about registering. And obviously that's the call to action. But what we also do that's, that's extremely useful is we have an integration within forms, like we do with pretty much all the different marketing automation systems. And based upon the response that people give to this, we add them to a um, corresponding, what's called a subscriber interest group or, or list in informs that they have for each one of these five topic areas. So after the conference, what they did was they went back to these folks and they said, hey, we know you're interested in this topic, worksite wellness. Did you know that we have these other products in that topic area? These four courses, this upcoming webinar, these journals, these, you know, so on and so forth. And now it makes their communication much more relevant instead of just blanketing what they send out to people in an irrelevant way. Um, another approach for, uh, for conferences is something like this, what Oklahoma um, uh, Society of CPAs did. So uh, they went out to their members, this is an awesome example. So they went out to their members and they, or their constituents and they said, hey, uh, we have this federal, uh, federal tax update coming up next week. Um, uh, uh, how are you planning on joining us? Now, what they did was if someone said, I'll attend in person or I'll attend virtually, then what they did was they engaged a, a, a process where they sent themselves a reminder email and OSCPA registered that person for the event. It cost $299. Um, they, they say that in one of the communications, they said that. And, and so, yeah, I think, actually, you know what, on the, I think on the thank you page, it says that. So what they did was they registered the person and then they sent them an invoice for the event. Um, they got, if I remember correctly, I think it was 94 people. They sent this about, about a week before the event, 94 people to register. And it drove approximately $23,000, $24,000 in, uh, in revenue. Um, and, and I think the price was anywhere from 219 to 2 to 299 based upon member or non-member. Um, it, it was hugely successful for them. Um, and they captured the intent of people. So if someone said, I can't make it this year, then they know, you know, they're not planning on it. So they don't have to waste, you know, any more communications on them. Um, so there's other ways to approach things from an event standpoint. Um, one of the things we also have is we have for free webinars. I think I have an example of it. Yeah. Um, for free webinars, we have a, a Zoom integration where you can register people uh, for a webinar or a meeting in Zoom based upon a workflow in PropFuel. So you can tie a workflow to, um, uh, to a specific answer. So for example, I could say if someone, you know, I, I send this email out and if they answer, they say, sign me up. What I'm going to do is I'm automatically going to register that person for the webinar in Zoom. So in this example, I've registered that person in Zoom. It's a one-click registration. Now, this is specifically for free webinars where the registration is being done via Zoom. You know, if, you, if you're running it through your AMS or you're collecting payment, obviously things become much more complex. But the key with this is, you know, a lot of times, a lot of associations are sending emails to members saying, hey, you know, come join our free webinar. And they're making them give them their information every single time in a Zoom registration form. And that's just a clunky process that, that is just laden with friction for the member, for the constituent. So what we can do is we can reduce that friction and make a very seamless one-click process to register for a free webinar. Um, so uh, a really good example. Um, I think that is, uh, um, uh, well, I'll say this. Um, if you are interested, um, let me know. You can just put it in the chat or Q&A. We have a set of documents that have really good examples. Like this one has a really nice overview of PropFuel, uh, talks about our services, um, you know, a number of things like that. This one has a series of use cases and um, specific examples of how clients have driven revenue and the ROI that they've seen with these different use cases. So new member acquisition, winning back lapsed members, 
member renewals, et cetera. If you would like um, uh, the links to these, just put, just, just say yes in the, uh, in the chat or the Q&A, and then we can get these to you. Um, so other than that, um, if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to, uh, to drop them in. And, um, uh, oh, awesome. Um, uh, Jamie, I will get that to you. Um, and if you have anything else uh, in the way of a question, uh, I'll hang here for about a minute or two. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you sincerely for your time today. I hope this was uh, valuable and uh, we look forward to the opportunity to talk further. I'll stop my sharing while I do that. Again, if you have a question, uh, feel free to drop it into the, uh, the chat or Q&A. And uh, doesn't look like we have anything. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like we have anything. So uh, that said, um, thank you sincerely for your time today. Have a good holiday season. And I uh, look forward to the opportunity to, uh, to connect with, uh, with y'all more uh, on an individual level. All right, thank you. Have a great day.